wasn't expecting anything. Soki, Soki, long time. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Talking to Myself News, I'm Scully Sanderson. Now, you're wondering why Scully Sanderson is my full persona. Well, I'll tell you, and it's actually quite simple, because it's the full name of my alter ego. Not that it means anything, but of course you knew that, you motherfucker. You make fucking George W. Bush wasting 20 trillion in 2001 look like Jesus in comparison. Ugh. I don't even know where the hell I was going with that, but whatever. The point I'm trying to make is simple. When you consider all the facts, when you look at it from a generalized standpoint, you know, in all seriousness, without any question, that you are the problem. Why? Because you fucking vote Democrat instead of Republican. And you're supposed to vote for the constitutional one at that. You won magnificent shit! <laughs> I don't even know why I put one in the golden child on there, but ever. Nothing! You need to Controversy does two things very, very well. Divide people and generate revenue. The challenge for all retailers and manufacturers is making its stores and products relevant to customers and maintaining that relevance. Nike has to fight to make itself be heard above the noise of its competitors. Sooner rather than later, Nike will launch another ad campaign with Kaepernick and eventually other controversial athletes. The cycle of negative publicity and calls for boycotts will begin. Again, whether the sales bump was attributable to Kaepernick or the massive free media that Nike received, or both, is not entirely clear. However, an analysis estimated that the free exposure was the equivalent of a $43 million media buy. Some analysts expressed cynicism about Nike's motives. However, it still appears to have been a risk that paid off. While Nike is not the first brand to take social and political positions, the question now is whether other brands will follow Nike's lead. Boycotting Nike is exactly what needs to happen to that liberal, hypocritical, communist, jihadist, Islamic State organization. Colin Kaepernick didn't sacrifice anything. He has no idea what it means to sacrifice anything. If he did, he wouldn't have been a panty waist and nailed for a non-existent cause and would have spent millions of his own money for the causes that he supported, supposedly, but he didn't. 
He just cried like a little Nazi socialist rich dumbass. For the Muslim loving Obama lover that he is. Not getting hired by a real NFL is precisely what he deserved. Nike hired him out of stupidity. It's amazing that people assume this is an emotional decision by Nike, when in reality, it's actually a business decision. The focal point of an apparel company should not be baby boomers. Purchasing power of millennials is real. And Nike just sparked demand for their products with this business decision. Nike is a global company that does not need a specific group of any kind in America or any other nation to flourish, especially with the Fed and government creating inflation and consistently and constantly devaluing the American dollar and the amount of debt owed as a percentage of GDP. Long term, this is a smart move, supposedly, for business. But included. So let's not make it personal, because Nike still benefits from negative publicity. See, the reality is simple. I look at both sides of the story. I decide which side is credible. And in Nike's case, their side was never credible in the 30 years that they have existed as an extension of the fascist, democratic, socialist, Nazi party. It's also worth noting to all you people who want to play the democratic card, like LinkedIn's own James C. Athanas. Your theology is a mess, and while mine isn't much better, at least we can agree that I am on the right side of history as a constitutional Republican. Remember, Democrats, and Democrat supporters, and sympathizers of liberalism, and Antifa sympathizers and siders, your demographic voted for an illegal immigrant from Kenya whose father was a terrorist to the highest office in the land for eight years because he promised and failed to deliver the hope and change that a previous Venezuelan leader decades ago also falsely advertised. And yet, despite his turning the entire FBI, CIA, and DOJ, for the most part, into a terrorist regime, people like you still supported him and voted for Hillary Rodham Clinton Soros Hitler in 2016 
while a businessman who never ran for office before, despite losing the popular vote by 3 million votes, won an election via the Electoral College, that your demographic and your democracy rigged especially for Clinton. How many billions of dollars just in the campaign alone of hers were wasted when your democracy rigged an entire electoral process for a woman whose husband Bill is not the biological father of an equally corrupt fascist in her own daughter Chelsea. By the way, her actual biological father is a man named Webb Hubble, and he's in prison for life for a terrible, terrible crime that he committed against his fellow humanity. How many billions were wasted during this entire debacle? Many millions and billions more than you'll ever care to let on. How many people did Obama alienate and lie to with his liberal brainwashing into electing him in 2008? 69.5 million people of which many of you Democrats were likely one of them in your own right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to slowly awaken from your slumber. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Anderson. Ah! Okay. Now, yeah, thank you guys. Now it's time for that segment. Of course, you already know what this is, apparently, but you get the picture, right? You know how this works. Ten reasons not to play the lottery. It's, it's, actually, it's actually quite simple. I'll tell you why, okay? First of all, the lure of the lottery is powerful. Just pony up a few bucks for a ticket while you're buying that coffee at the corner store. And a few days later, all your dreams could come true. This line of thinking compels Americans to spend more money on lottery tickets than on books, movies, video games, sporting events, and music put together. In total, we drop more than $70 billion a year on the dream that comes with that little slip of paper inked with numbers. For virtually everyone that plays, though, that dream will never come true. And for that tiny, 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 emasculately minuscule minority that beat the odds, the dream becomes a nightmare because they don't know what to do with the billions and billions of dollars that they win, so they spend it frivolously on things that they know they can't afford. So, I'll tell you why the lottery is nothing more than a scam and why I never play. First of all, investing is a much better bet. If you won $25,000 playing the lottery, you'd be happy, right? Well, if you took the $300 that the average American spends on lottery tickets every year and invested it, you would have... That exact amount, $25,441 specifically, after three decades of $300 contributions, presuming a 6% return. By relying on compound interest instead of luck, you can generate a hefty windfall instead of praying for one. Because the lottery sucks! Second of all, the vast majority of profits do not benefit teachers or students or schools or universities. No, you know where they go? They go directly to democracy. They go 
to the politicians that go to Rothschild, to Rockefeller, to Soros, to Clinton, to Bush, to Obama. The feel-good story with the lottery is that even when you lose, the kids win every time you buy a ticket. The proceeds after all benefits public education. Only problem is, it's bullshit. First of all, the lion's share of the profits go to funding payouts, and another huge chunk is dumped into advertising, because generally, less than one in every three dollars actually goes to education. Even though that's still billions of dollars for schools, the numbers are deceiving. Legislatures anticipate the lottery profits and simply substitute that money with traditional funding instead of supplementing it as the system was made for and designed to do. Number three, it preys on the poor. In other words, it's a lottery tax. It's a tax on the gullible. It's a tax on the stupid. It's a tax on the poor. It's a tax on the impoverished. According to research by the Journal on Gambling Studies, the vast majority of tickets are sold to low-income Americans in poor ghetto neighborhoods. Poor people spend much more on lottery tickets than the general population, even though they can least afford to throw their money away. Why? Because that's where lottery-related advertising is most heavily concentrated. And that's where the dream is sowed most aggressively. Number four. The poor lose even when they win. A hugely disproportionate number of lottery winners receive state assistance. That means they're buying lottery tickets taxpayer-funded money that was supposed to help with necessities. The state does not forbid this activity. In fact, it encourages it by advertising so heavily in places where residents tend to receive public assistance. But, in a final act of retribution against the poor, many shithole states like New York and California confiscate prizes from anyone who receives assistance in the rare cases that they do win, which those cases aren't rare anymore. They happen all the time. Because who isn't on public assistance? Number five. And this is probably a damning one. It's just another tax, which is a confirmation of what number three confirmed. For the state, the best tax is the one that they don't have to coerce out of the person paying it. Since players lose an average of roughly 50 cents a dollar for every lottery ticket that they buy, the system serves as an implicit tax of about 38%. In fact, many states earn more from lotteries than they do from corporate taxes. Number six. The advertising is bullshit it misleads you. It's absolute god-awful garbage. And it's intentionally programmed to brainwash you. State lotteries enjoy the luxury of being exempt from federal truth in advertising laws. That means that advertisers can imply that with nothing more than a ticket, a dream, and some good vibes, winning is a real possibility. They're also allowed to downplay the odds and risks. But what are they really downplaying? The fact that they're bullshitting you or the fact that you're probably going to get fucked in the ass? I think it's both, personally. Number eight. And actually, no, number seven. We'll get to number eight later. But number seven. A tendency towards ruined lives and broken relationships. Yes, the lottery ruins more relationships and lives than even the Maury Show or the Jerry Springer Show or the Maury Povich Show. Did I mention Maury twice? 
Yeah, I think I mentioned Mari twice. But they ruin more relationships than the average stereotypical tabloid talk show. Time is just one of the many publications to report on the so-called lottery curse. And it isn't so-called with no reason, because there's a damn good reason why the lottery is a curse. Because even if you do happen to beat the odds and win it by sheer godlike luck, your life is pretty much over and you kill yourself before you even get to spend all your money. Lottery players are likely thinking about the cars, boats, travel, and freedom that a lucky ticket would bring. The sudden arrival of a massive cash windfall causes enormous upheaval in the life of the average person. They're probably not even thinking about the fact that should they actually win, virtually everyone they've ever known will see them as a wallet packaged in extraneous flesh for the rest of their lives because jealousy, greed, and resentment are common side effects of winning lottery tickets. They can lead to isolation. They can lead to paranoia. They can lead to divorce. And they can lead to depression. And even make the winner a target for violence. For violence while increasing the chances that the lottery winner will kill himself or herself. And that's why it's called the lottery curse, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's not so called without a reason, because it's absolutely fucking true. Number eight, winning paints a bullseye on your back. If you happen to win a big prize and you live in a state that requires public disclosure, or even when you don't, but you're otherwise revealed as a winner, plan for a bunch of unwanted attention. You'll suddenly become the biggest target for scam artists, fraudsters, blackmailers, and people who file frivolous lawsuits for a living. In other words, Democrats. Number nine. Even if you win, you're going to lose. All big lottery ticket winners have one thing in common. The likelihood that they'll declare bankruptcy within three to five years skyrockets the second that they cash in that ticket. Because they don't know how to spend their money because they're retarded. Big lottery winners are incredibly likely. Okay. Big lottery winners are incredibly likely to blow it all, go broke, and end up worse off than they were before they won. One of the biggest reasons is the sense of entitlement that friends and family attend to assume. Remember, entitlement is not just a personality trait. It is also a permanent mental illness in many Americans. And I know this because I suffered from it for a time. I grew out of it, though, because the cure for entitlement is getting a life, not playing the lottery, and actually doing something with your life. That is the absolute fucking truth. Those hangers-on also tend to see the prize as bottomless, bleeding the winner of money, and causing emotional distress along the way. And number 10, I believe this is probably the most damning, you're absolutely never going to win. You're not going to win! The odds of winning the Powerball grand prize are basically, you're more likely to get struck by lightning seven times in a row than winning. That's how unlikely it is. The odds of winning Powerball are 292.5 million to one. Or, to put it more likely, one in in every 300 million, you might as well say that. CNBC, who by the way is part of the fake news, provides some context for that impossible to grasp number. It is almost certain that you will not die from a shark attack, and the odds of that happening are a much more reasonable one in 3.7 million. Which means you are more likely to survive 
two consecutive shark attacks than to win the lottery. You are more likely to be struck by lightning seven times in your lifespan before you ever win the lottery. The odds of dying in an asteroid strike are one in almost two million, which compared to the lottery seems pretty much guaranteed. If any situation had one in 293 million odds of success, the situation would be nothing more than an abortion, a lost cause. It would be nothing more than, say, WWE in 2018 with their Roman Reigns bullshit. In other words, it's not meant to be. So don't play the lottery because it's absolute bullshit and they lie to you from the get-go. So don't buy it because you know and I know that if you play the lottery and you win, you're going to kill yourself. Everyone is going to turn away from you because you will have sold out to Rothschild. Even before you won, you will have shown out to Rothschild. And let me tell you right now. Let me tell you straight up. People, I'm not kidding when I say this. Listen to me. Listen to me, goddamn you! Do not play the lottery. It will kill you. You will die if you win the lottery. You will file for bankruptcy after you cash in that ticket. And you will, after you win the lottery, by some sheer God-given miracle, commit suicide after you win the lottery. It is a guarantee. It is a fact. It has been proven to be true. It is absolutely 100% guaranteed. And you know it to be true, don't you? That's right. Because it is. This episode of Talking to Myself News has been sponsored by Shotgun. Applied directly to the forehead. Shotgun. Applied directly to the forehead. Shotgun. Applied directly to the forehead. Then pull the trigger and watch your life literally go up in smoke. Of course, not that it matters or anything, but you need to know the bastard truth or you need to kill yourself. Simple. It's also been sponsored by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is paid in part by suckers like you. Now get out. This video is over. Get off of my fucking channel if you don't like what you see. But if you like what you see, then feel free to stay on as long as you want. I'm here all night. Thank you and good night. Laters. That means this video is over, so go to another one. It's time to go to the... Yeah.